So let's start with uh, the number of leads per month. This is the first KPI I'll be talking about today. Um, in my experience as an account manager, I uh, get the question a lot from my partners. Hey, Maxim, uh, I'm, I'm not getting any leads from you. How are we supposed to uh, make revenue, make business uh, if you're not providing many leads uh, to us? And that's, a, that's definitely a valid argument, but uh, it's important to note that in our partnership contract, we don't promise to provide you uh, any leads. Actually, we're counting on our partners to be uh, autonomous and acquire uh, your own leads uh, from many different sources. Uh, if you do get leads from us, which hopefully during your partnership career will definitely happen. Uh, you should definitely see this as the, uh, the cherry of the cake on your partnership, uh, and hopefully this will also allow you to increase your business in the end. Um, so what could you do to increase uh, the number of leads uh, on a monthly basis? There's definitely many things we could, we, uh, that you should do that you can consider. Uh, first of all, uh, we recommend to uh, contact your network. So your network should always be the first source uh, of your potential re Odoo revenue. Uh, and your network, in this case, being uh, your friends, your family, maybe friends of your friends. Um, so I'm sure you being an entrepreneur, you might have other friends that are also an entrepreneur and possibly are not using any software to manage their business yet. So it might be a great idea to uh, contact those friends, ask them uh, what software they're using to manage their business and if they're happy using that software. Uh, and possibly uh, this will lead to a certain appointment with those people uh, and them being interested to get a demonstration of Adu which eventually maybe leads to your first customer. So your network is definitely the first important source of potential revenue for you. Uh, another, another alternative solution or uh, uh, a great idea to increase your business and acquire more customers uh, could be to publish or sell your modules on the Odoo application store. So as you probably all know already, we have a, a, a community app store. Uh, you can find that on the, on the website odoo.com slash apps. Uh, where a lot of uh, third-party applications are published. So you as a partner, if you have a development team and you've already developed some integrations or connectors for other customers, could be a great idea to offer uh, that integration or that uh, third-party application on the App Store, as this allows you to increase your visibility and recognition in the Odoo ecosystem uh, and make a name for yourself in, uh, in the partner network. Uh, a very obvious lead trigger or uh, lead generator, so to say, should always be your website. Um, so your website really is uh, the main representation of your company online. So it's very important to have lead triggers implemented on your website. Um, one of the simplest forms of a lead trigger can obviously be a contact form on your website, meaning that if your customer visits your website, is interested in the services you're providing, he can leave, your, he, he can leave his contact details there, which allows you to contact him uh, and evaluate whether he has certain business needs that you can cover with, uh, with the software. Uh, a great idea also is to have uh, a free trial uh, of Odoo button implemented on your website. So as you know, on the Odoo website, we have such a button which allows you to create a demonstration database. There's also some partners that uh, integrate that button on their own website, which directly brings them to the Odoo website and creates a demonstration database for them, which is then linked to you as a partner. So this way, they can try the software uh, through your website uh, and immediately get a, get a grasp of what the functionalities are of Odoo. Um, another way to increase the number of leads through your website is obviously to do some search engine optimization activities, uh, meaning you're yeah, going to optimize your search engine optimization uh, and basically get more traffic to your website, which allows you to uh, increase uh, the number of people that leave their contact details and uh, uh, potential uh, leads for you in the future to tackle. And of course, Google AdWords is uh, reasonably something else that, that you could uh, focus on. Uh, you could also have some nice content to download. So we also rec always recommend our partners to uh, uh, write some content regarding Odoo out of your own expertise, since this can be interesting to read for potential interested people. Um, and of course, mention Odoo on your website. You might think that that's, that makes sense as an Odoo partner that you mention Odoo. Uh, but trust me, there's actually some partners that don't mention that they're an Odoo partner on their website. And obviously, if people don't know that you're an Odoo partner, they won't contact you uh, for pro providing Odoo implementation services. So definitely mention Odoo on your website. Make people aware that you're an Odoo partner and that you're an expert in this industry. Uh, and last but not least, uh, do some social media activities. Be active on LinkedIn. Make some posts. Uh, and let the outside world know that you're an expert in this, uh, in this field and that they can come to you for any advice regarding the software. So what's next? 
Um, another thing you could do to gener generate more leads in general is to host some events. Uh, events could be online or even on site. Uh, online events being maybe a webinar that you're organizing. So you can invite, uh, obviously we're hoping that our partners are using Odoo themselves. You could send a mass mail to your database that you're hosting a webinar on a certain subject or uh, dedicated to a specific industry. And that way people might uh, watch uh, you explain certain things online, which can be interesting for their business. And also, again, increase the awareness that people have of you of a, as a partner. And pot potentially they will ask you to uh, have a follow-up meeting on that. Uh, which can explain you, which which allows you to explain further uh, what Odoo has to provide uh, for uh, for them to optimize their business. You could also organize uh, physical events, obviously, again about certain subjects uh, or uh, specific industries. So uh, definitely don't hesitate to take some action yourself and organize these kind of uh, things to increase the number of leads in general. Um, when I'm talking about on-site events, it's always always very important to uh, take into account that uh, Odoo is uh, hosting Odoo roadshows all the time, all, of, all around the world. So I think last year we did around 150 roadshows uh, in almost every country uh, on the world. Probably not every country, but basically everywhere. Uh, and these are events that we co-host with partners. So as a partner, you have the opportunity to sponsor such a roadshow and uh, gain visibility and recognition uh, from Odoo at the event itself, which allows you to be there, present, be present at the event them itself, uh, and introduce yourself as a partner, and also explain again what you can mean for this customer and how you can help them to scale up the, their business uh, and, and manage uh, their business processes through the software. Uh, some general statistics which might be really interesting. Such an event has around 200 attendees in general. Uh, uh, that's an average number of attendees per event. So definitely a nice number of interested people that come to that event. Uh, uh, but the number of leads is actually a lot higher. So we have around 350 people at least on average again that uh, register for such an event. So as I just said, this allows you to increase your visibility. Since you're present there, you, you're, you're allowed to uh, present yourself and, and your services to everybody who's sitting in the room. Uh, and it allows you to meet people who are active in the uh, Odoo ecosystem. An important thing to note as well, if you did sponsor such an event, uh, be as well before the event and after the event, you will receive the full list of attendees and re registered people. So after that, you also have the opportunity uh, to maybe send them uh, an email to follow up on their interest and to see if you can schedule a follow-up uh, appointment, possibly to give them a demonstration and show them the functionalities. So that's the first KPI, definitely a lot of content. So you want to have many different uh, actions that you can take to increase the number of leads you're getting and that potentially can bring you some, uh, some extra revenue. And now we're gonna have a look at how you can improve uh, the process on uh, uh, converting those leads to more specific appointments. So first of all, it's important that if you have a lead uh, that you uh, talk in uh, other people's interest so that you actually spark their attention regarding what you have to say. Um, so as you can see on the slide here, you don't wanna use the classic approach like, hi, my name is X, I'm working for ABC Company, I would like to show you Odoo. This doesn't really evoke an interest or, or creates a specific need, it's uh, rather boring, so to say. Um, what you would like to do or uh, how you would like to speak to this customer is saying something like, okay, over the last six months, I've been talking with people in your position. They told me they are facing the following issues. Uh, this allows you to create a value proposition and talk about the pain points. So your customer will be more tempted to speak about what they're experiencing with their current software and uh, what pain points uh, that you can potentially tackle uh, and solve using uh, Odoo. So also you want to adapt the speech uh, regarding to the person you're talking to. So imagine you're talking to a sales manager. Uh, in that case, you want to emphasize uh, all the sales possibilities, the reporting possibilities that that person might have, uh, since uh, he will obviously be interested to see how his team is doing and what conversion rate that uh, his salespeople are, are having regarding the deals. Uh, then again, when you're talking to someone inventory related, like a warehouse manager, he will be more interested in uh, seeing what routes uh, he can apply, uh, uh, monitoring the stock and, and what reordering rules that can be configured in the database. So how do you actually increase, uh, increase your uh, conversion rate from the appointment to the actual proposal? Obviously, if you're having meetings with customers, uh, you want to make as much proposals as possible so that the customer can possibly uh, engage in that proposal. Um, 
basically what we always say is the main selling technique of Odoo is doing a great demonstration. So showing the software is really your most uh, powerful tool as a salesperson in the Odoo network. Uh, we have a lot of videos on this on the partnership knowledge base uh, on specific demonstration techniques uh, and how to do a great demonstration. So we won't get uh, go too much in depth on that. Uh, but I do want to mention some key points of a great demonstration. Uh, a demonstration really is the show time, uh, your, sh your time to show your expertise in the software and to show the features and what uh, those features can actually, how those features can impact the business of your customer. Uh, as I already mentioned, you need to focus on the pain points of your customer. So your customer might be experiencing uh, some difficulties uh, managing the software right now. If you can pick in on those pain points and show them how Odoo can solve these, that will really leave a good impression in your, uh, for your customer. Uh, and impress them and also make them more interested to uh, start using Odoo Enterprise. Uh, this allows you to put forward the value proposition as well. Um, as I'm doing right now, I'm showing some slides that might not be so interesting. So when you're doing a demonstration, make sure not to use a presentation, but to really show the software. Um, also, you want to tell a story rather than showing a, a series of fields and screens. Um, when I'm talking to partners and they're asking for advice regarding demonstrations, I always ask them to avoid using the words click and field and press this tab as much as possible and really tell a story that the customer is engaged in and said so that he understands uh, what I'm actually saying. So for example, if I'm doing a sales related demonstration, I will say, okay, now I'm creating a quotation for this many tables. I'm sending it to my customer. The customer is uh, accepting my uh, offer, which allows me to create the invoice and send it to the customer. Um, and so as, as I said before, uh, if you want to have a review on your demonstration skills, uh, don't hesitate to contact your account manager uh, and that account manager can then evaluate your demonstration and give you some feedback. So what about the conversion rate from the proposal to the contract, your actual closing rate? This is definitely, definitely an important uh, measurement and we want your closing rate to be as high as possible. Um, uh, what we want to, you to, to recommend here to do is to take into account uh, what kind of customer uh, you're talking to. So you really want to take into account the size of their company. Uh, when you're having a rather small project for a rather small uh, company, being uh, five to 10 users, um, we want you to apply the out-of-the-box approach. So you really need to limit the developments. And sometimes you will have to educate your customers on the budget that is required versus the value proposition that you're offering. So again, you need really need to identify the pain points of uh, their current business uh, and focus on those pain points. Um, you need to drop the nice to have functionalities. So what we're talking about is you have nice to have functionalities and you have must have functionalities. You need to focus on the things that are really necessary for them to operate their business and try to fit this in the out of the box uh, Odoo Enterprise solution. The nice to have functionalities are functionalities that might be nice for the customer to use but are not really crucial. Um, so if these nice to have functionalities uh, have a big impact on, on the budget, it's better to forget about them uh, and tackle them later on in the project. Uh, so try to find workarounds rather than doing more developments. Sometimes uh, it's easy to fix a certain uh, requirement from the customer by just doing things uh, in a different manner, and this allows you to do less developments in general. Too much development will lead to higher costs, uh, and this is, uh, will also lead to a high, higher total cost of ownership. Um, also, if you're doing many developments, imagine the customer wants to migrate to a next version. We don't migrate the developments itself, so that, that again will increase uh, the costs of, uh, of your project, and you don't want that since on the long term it will lead to uh, customer that is that satis dissatisfaction. My apologies. So what about the bigger projects? Uh, for the bigger projects, we recommend you to start with a gap analysis. So when you're doing a gap analysis, you're really gonna uh, define the requirements of the customer and you're gonna compare the requirements to uh, the standard functionalities of Odoo so that you see uh, what's possible to uh, uh, do in Odoo standard and what is not. Uh, you will really have a detailed analysis of that uh, and uh, possibly this will help you to define uh, whether some developments are really crucial uh, or not and also have an estimation on how much budget is required for the project to be successful. A gap analysis will give you a clear vision of the customer needs. It will reduce the risk of the integrator uh, for the integrator and the customer. And again, it will define you to help you to define what is standard, what is a simple customization, and what is a heavy customization, and will help you define what you should prioritize on in the project. 
Okay. Then again, the, the, the project uh, versus the profitability, this is a comparison you should definitely take into account. So you really need to take into account the uh, time you invest in pre-sales versus the revenue you can get out of the project. So from time to time, you have a customer with a lot of demands, uh, and he wants to see many, many demonstrations before actually signing a contract and starting the project. Uh, so you don't want to have the case where you're going to have a small revenue on a certain project, but you need to invest a lot of hours in pre-sales. Those are not really interesting projects to take on. Uh, and so some projects might not be that interesting, and it's good to leave them aside and focus on some projects that have a better profitability for you as a partner. Also, avoid heavy customization. We have discussed this in previous slides, but I do want to put some extra emphasis on that. Uh, try to avoid heavy customization that will explode the customer budget uh, and increase the total cost of ownership. Also, this is not even taking into account the maintenance that you will actually have to do for these developments. So when a customer is asking for development uh, and it's possible to do this development, you, you, do, you don't want to focus on short-term uh, satisfaction of your customer. You want your customer to be satisfied in the long term. So many developments might have additional costs, uh, including the maintenance, and it might be smarter to avoid uh, heavy customization. So always start with the out-of-the-box approach. Uh, implement the standard processes. Implement the must-have uh, features in, uh, in the software. And then regarding the specific needs, you, you'll be able to tackle those uh, later on in your project. Um, and indeed, educate your customers that some functionalities might not be that important and might increase the costs of the project in general. So you should always start with the functionality that are really, really necessary for your project to succeed. And those nice to have features, you can tackle them later on or you can avoid them in, uh, in general. I can see I only have one minute left, but actually I have great news. Uh, because this is the end of my presentation. Um, as you can see here, if you do have any questions regarding these topics and how you can allow to uh, scale your business even more, you can contact your account manager. As I'm an account manager myself, you can also ask some questions uh, right now. Uh, but uh, that's it for now. Uh, thank you all for being here. Any questions? Yes. That's correct. Some partners do have that trial button, which directly creates a trial database uh, under the name of uh, the partner. I don't know the specific technical requirements in order to do that, but if you want, I can check that internally and send you some instructions uh, later on for sure. Any other questions? Yes. We try to monitor it as well as possible, but it's not that we have specific reporting uh, uh, possibilities that we're applying in order to monitor these uh, statistics. But in general, we try to do as many things possible in order to increase the number of leads and, and scale our business even more. Um, not sure if that if that answers your question. I would need to. I I can't I can't uh, give you that answer right now. Uh, total cost of ownership. So. Yeah. Yes.
Um, well, we're investing more in marketing that, than before. I can I can tell you that. But in general, we have the vision that uh, we want to invest more in R and D so that our product gets better and better. Uh, and eventually, in that sense, the product should be able to sell itself. Uh, but of course, we're working very hard to increase the visibility uh, all around the world. Uh, to to give you a, a quick example, in the Netherlands, we didn't do any marketing campaigns before, but now we started a big marketing campaign and we have billboards everywhere. We have trucks uh, driving with uh, advertising regarding Odoo, which of course, again, helps to increase the visibility and the recognition of the brand. Uh, and over time, this will lead to uh, more business for Odoo in the future. At least we're convinced that that is uh, the way forward. Okay, since it's the Friday afternoon and also the end of the experience, uh, I want to thank you uh, for being here. If you do have any remaining questions, you can uh, just uh, come to me right here and, and we'll discuss uh, the remaining questions. Thank you very much. Have a nice afternoon.